All right, if you've seen my other Kepler videos, you may have noticed that my Kepler S done right had to cost less than or equal to its in-game version, but my R done right cost more than double the, the game version. One of the big pluses of my S done right is how easy it is to upgrade. So I wanted to see what I could do with it using the R's budget. The in-game Kepler R shows up in my system uh, with my perks as 377,677 credits. So that's my budget. I'm calling this the RS variant. As usual, it must be 100% made with parts available at the Stradeckland Star Yard. It must cost less than 377,677 credits. And it must, to the best of its ability, fulfill the design team's impossible vision of a luxurious, deep space exploration, family recreation, cargo hauling fighter. And here's what I came up with. The interior layout is only slightly different from the um, S done right. I replaced the um, 2x1 all-in-ones um, with 3x1 all-in-ones and uh, switched their position. So this was the infirmary before, now it's a 3x1 all-in-one, and the infirmary is over here. Control stations and uh, cockpit. Another three by one all in one. And a workshop. That's all it needs in the interior. So it looks very much like my Kepler S done right. It's just got some upgrades. The weapons, significant upgrades, uh, now have four of the PB-175 Helion, Helion beams. Uh, these are great. They fire forever. Uh, you don't have to wait for them to recharge. You know, they will fire and fire and fire. And then if you need a little bit more firepower, three of the exterminators. This shield, this is the best B-class shield you can get. It is... Um, it is heavy though, at uh, 90 mass. I made the decision that I could not use the Vanguard shield, which would have given me 1450, but for only 71 mass, which is would make a big difference. But um, I figured this is a commercial vessel; it wouldn't have access to the Vanguard. The best B-class reactor you can get, 39, since you know in order to get more, you know, a C-class reactor won't give you that much more. Uh, so I figured B would be enough. The um, Aurora 13G Grav Drive keeps it at 30 light year jump range. We got mismatched tanks back here in order to get um, 270 fuel. I've tested jumping um, bore to Katie did, uh, which is the longest jump I know of, and in this ship it takes uh, 225 fuel. Um, so I was trying to give the ship 220 fuel, but then I figured it probably needed more than that. You know, not everybody would have the full perks. Uh, well, then again, they're not not always going to be jumping bore to Katie did in one go, so. Two twenty-five point seven fuel. That is the longest jump that I know of. So I was thinking maybe I only needed like two twenty fuel on this. I just got went ahead, but two seventy. The engines are the uh, Slayton uh, Aerospace fifty-six sixties. Uh, four of these together. Um, make it possible to get to 99 mobility with uh, over 4,000 cargo. It's 
pretty much as good as you can do without going to class C. And then you're talking real money for um, like six class C engines. I was trying to get to, to 100 mobility, but the main thing that stopped me is the shield. The mass of the shield. Couldn't quite get it up to um, 100, but I figured 99 was close enough. And this is the best shield you can get in Class B. Alright, let's do a speed test. Um, cruising speed 217, and boost. About 8.15 maybe. Pretty good. Now being better than the um, in-game Kepler R is not difficult because it was a terrible ship to begin with. So being better than it in every way, not a high bar. So I decided to compare this one to other ships somewhere around the same price range, the in-game ships. Um, the Tayo ships, the Narwhal and the Orca 3 are the closest in price. Um, and this ship clearly beats both of them. Um, the they both have less than half as much cargo, uh, less shield. The Orca Three's got some decent weapons, but um, Narwhal's mobility of 58, Orca Three mobility of 65. So I think uh, this easily beats them, and uh, then also wanted to compare it against um, some significantly more expensive ships, uh, the Vista 3, the Crossbow 3, the Reef 3, and the Stormrider 3. Um, those range in price from 430000 to 453000 The only one that really is competition for it is the Reef 3. Um, I was surprised. The Vista 3 mobility of 36. I couldn't believe that when I saw that. I thought that was a good ship. It turns out it's pretty bad. Um, the Crossbow 3 mobility of 41. It um, jump range of only 24. Only a thousand cargo. Um, I don't know where the money goes into that one. Storm Rider 3, um, actually a pretty weak ship. The Reef 3 is the only real competition. It's got, got really nice um, turret weapons. Um, it's close in cargo, 3,500 cargo to this 4110. Uh, 84 mobility, so it's decent mobility. It's the only one that's close, but still costing... 75,000 credits more, you know, 20% more, uh, and it's just close. So, so I think if um, Stradeckland brought this ship to market, I think it would be very competitive and uh, be a very good seller for them.